right. I'm a, I don't know, monster nurse from Silent Hill now. One of them. Yeah, that would do. I'm not well again. It's I, pretty sure it's not coronavirus this time. That'd be a fucking pisser. But I'm not well. So I've just crawled out of bed to smear my mouth all over the microphone. Justin can have that be his problem. Justin, do one of those animations. Make me a Silent Hill nurse, please. Thank you. Right. So today we are going to be talking about Silent Hill. Or more to be specific. Uh, we're going to be talking about Silent Hill, and more specifically Silent Hill 2, and even more specifically the rumours that Bloober Team is working on a Silent Hill remake, or at the very least, some sort of Silent Hill game. Now, as will become quite apparent, I am no fan of Bloober Team's work, and... More importantly, before we begin, I should say that because we're talking about Bloober Team's work, we need a content warning for discussions of mental illness, sexual abuse, trauma, and terrible, terrible writing regarding such themes. <laughs> you know what, I'm just going to leave that in. The following segment will contain footage and spoiler discussions of the game Silent Hill 2 and the medium. This will include describing and discussing events in the game, some involving the following subjects. Mental illness, trauma, child abuse, sexual assault, murder and suicide. Silent Hill 2 is my favourite video game of all time, perhaps matched only by Bloodborne. A beautifully bleak exploration of trauma, abuse, guilt and gender, Silent Hill 2 remains perhaps the most nuanced psychological psychological horror in a genre populated primarily by blood, guts and schlock. This is not to say that Silent Hill 2 is an exemplar of narrative subtlety. Everything involving the character of Eddie, for example, is as in your face as it is absurdly hammy. But in a medium that more often than not deploys a sledgehammer to notions of literary themes without an iota of complexity, Silent Hill 2 has stood the test of time as one of the few video games that actually has something to say and says it exquisitely. This is to say nothing of the impressive horror it exudes, a game with a truly unsettling atmosphere, marrying visual desolation to an eerily beautiful soundtrack, frequently polluted with malevolent discord and oppressive industrial noise. Its menagerie of monsters ooze with an innate fear of femininity that increasingly comes to typify the psyche of protagonist James Sunderland. Steeped in lore that at once fleshes out and obfuscates the town of Silent Hill itself, what I really appreciate is how it almost completely abandons the plot of the original Silent Hill. With Silent Hill 3 continuing that plot, Silent Hill 2 remains its own unique story, a bubble episode if you will, a way of showing that the town of Silent Hill is bigger than any one narrative, that it contains a multitude of stories that need no connection to some all-encompassing arc plot. Anyway, there are rumours that Silent Hill 2 is being remade by a studio that argues trauma victims are beyond saving and thinks that a door disappearing behind you is still an effective scare after literally every 2-bit horror game has done the exact same tawdry trick. Yes, Bloober Team, a studio I've long criticised for its hackneyed writing, fumbling of themes and cliche riddled horror design, may very well be working on a remake of Silent Hill 2, or at least some other form of Silent Hill game. This, in my opinion, is deeply unexciting news, and my apathy is no outlier. Many Silent Hill fans have voiced their contempt for the notion, and with good cause, Bloober Team team's horror output is tropey, hokey, and often indistinguishable from the laziest horror effort squirted daily onto Steam via the ever-gaping sluice pit of Steam Direct. And that's the least of Bloober's issues. At worst, the studio is forever fumbling its ill-advised attempts at tackling themes of mental illness, abuse, and trauma. To call the studio's uneducated narrative missteps problematic is to truly undersell how atrocious its writing can be. Make no mistake, Bloober's mishandling of themes it has no business tackling would be laughable if it wasn't often outright offensive, reckless and dangerous. Take for example the medium. Much has been written on what is perhaps Bloober's best and most troubling game. The third person survival horror is mechanically fine, a fairly straightforward horror game with environmental puzzles and basic stealth that utilises a dual screen format to pretend it's more complex than it actually is. Narratively however, the medium is 
fucking dreadful. Its entire premise is that traumatised people inevitably traumatise others in turn, and in doing so manages to both sympathise far too much with abusers and dismiss far too much their victims. As described in this excellent thread by Bob Vids, the medium portrays a monster named The Moor as the manifestation of the protagonist's sister's trauma. Lily was molested as a child, and the result was the creation of a monster that indiscriminately murders people. In the end, Lily is begging her sister to kill her in order to stop the more, with the very clear implication being that she is beyond saving, that her rape has made her irreparably broken, and death is the only way out. This may seem like an uncharitable read, but it's literally the finale of the game. There is no other option explored. The protagonist Marianne is faced with killing her sister, or killing herself to stop the more possessing her. The ending is ambiguous, but the implication is that some people can't be saved. The ending trophy even says as much, and it's fucking disgusting. Many people have torn apart this premise, but for me the portrayal of Richard, the man who molested Lily, is equally grotesque. I still remember the feeling of revulsion I had when reaching this part midway through the game. Richard is portrayed as having abused a child as a result of his own trauma. He had an abusive stepfather who raped his mother. This causes Richard to create his own more like creature, the Child Eater, and well, I'm just gonna outright say it, the medium comes across a lot like it sympathises with paedophiles. It focuses on Richard's trauma to the point of essential absolution, portraying his actions as beyond his control and expecting the audience to feel pity rather than disgust. Well, I did not feel the former, and my feelings of the latter extended beyond the character and to the developer itself. And none of this is written well, I should add. It goes for shock value in all its portrayals, trying to stun the audience with its edgy content. Ultimately, the medium is a wholly reckless game, a game that spits on abuse victims, displays a woeful misunderstanding of trauma, and sends a horrific message that some people are so broken that a bullet to the head is the first and last option. I didn't like Blooper very much before even this. The layers of fear games are themselves woefully inept at portraying mental illness and are full to the brim with stock horror game tropes that were hackneyed even back when they were released. Oh, a door is locked when you try to open it, but now it's unlocked. Oh, this corridor goes on forever until you turn around and see a door is suddenly behind you. Ooh. Some people have tried to defend the studio for its awful writing, rather patronisingly claiming they're an Eastern European studio and that's just their understanding of mental illness. Yeah, fuck that. That's a terrible excuse. In Britain, the wider cultural understanding of mental illness is that you can just stop being sad, and having a nice cup of tea is the cure for suicidal thoughts. It's so steeped in UK culture that mental health professionals here actually espouse that shit. And it's shit. It's wrong. It's irresponsible. Having a shitty understanding of mental health doesn't make that understanding somehow less shitty. It means more that you should keep the fuck away from subjects you have no business trying to handle. It's weird to me that an independent horror studio who's shown a genuine love for the genre and has many key team members on record citing Silent Hill 2 as one of their biggest inspirations is getting so much hostility thrown towards them over the possibility of them making Silent Hill, argued Miles Dompierre in a tweet that sparked quite a bit of conversation. Now, all respect to Miles, who I don't think quite appreciates how harmful Bloober's work is, but having love for something doesn't make you good at it. I love cute dresses and can't sew a single stitch. I love soup, but I'm so bad at cooking I tend to make tomato basil baby food. Hell, as has been pointed out in response, the director of the Silent Hill movie loved Silent Hill, but that didn't lead him to make a film that wasn't shite. Bloober Team's work is largely hack-level D-grade horror, littered with banal cliches, while even decent efforts like Blair Witch fail to explore subjects like PTSD without heedlessly fucking up. At best, Bloober is a producer of bog-standard horror fluff. At worst, it's an irresponsible company with pretensions of depth, grasping at subject matter it has neither the education nor maturity to handle. It's persistence with hurtful portrayals of mental illness that has seemingly gotten worse over time could once be written off as amateur hour tomfoolery, but has increasingly come off as outright malicious. Bloober Team is at best out of its depth, at worst purposefully inimical. I can see why Konami might be keen on them. You know, cause... Cause Konami is shit. 
fucking shit. Fuck Konami, am I right? Because it's bad. Did you see that other Silent Hill thing that they think is going to be set in England where there's a girl with Minga written on her face? I mean, I really didn't want to do another random... <coughs> I really didn't want... Oh, Christ. I really... Forget it. I hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. Let me just throw in a quick plug for a an upcoming wrestling event that I'm very excited about. Commander Stephanie Sterling shall be taking part in the UK's very first LGBTQ plus wrestling event, Pride of the Ring, in Blackpool, England, on June 11th. That Sheffield show was cancelled because some pricks had a death match in a conservative club full of children. Nothing to do with us. We just got tarred with one massive fucking brush. As a result, my next confirmed date is indeed PCW's Pride of the Ring, where I will be tag teaming with a mystery partner against Marcus Holton and Harley Hudson. There are some tickets still available, though I don't imagine that will be the case for much longer. If you can get to Blackpool on June 11th for the very first day of Blackpool Pride, I would love to see you there and I'm sure we could all rejoice together. Until then, thank God for me, I'm gonna go have a fucking lie down.